Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, greetings. And Exodus 3, verse 10 to 12 is what we focus on tonight, um, January 18th. Um, Angus Bushan entitles this devotion, An Ordinary Man. And I've been doing these devotions. Um, I don't prepare for them because it's my private devotion I'm reading and seeing what God is saying to me and I'm sharing it with you. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 6 and then verse 10 to 12 in the Bible in 366 days for men, women, boys and girls. Let's start. New Living Translation, Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 6 and verse 10 to 12. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stayed in amazement. Although the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go and see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protest, protested to God, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. Just yesterday we talked about there are no coincidences, only God incidences, and God brought him to that point there and told him, when you have brought the people of Egypt out, you will worship me right on this very mountain. This was a tough assignment. Because Moses had fled from Egypt because he had killed an Egyptian who was fighting an unfaring, a Hebrew, and fearing for his life. He ran away and found himself over here in the desert. Got married while he was over there, and he was living in the compound of Jethro, his father in law, who was a priest in Midian. Now, where do we hear this Midian already? Did we hear this in Midian when we talk about Joseph who was sold to the Midianites? And they went down to Egypt. And here it is now that Moses had fled from, and Moses was a Hebrew, a descendant of Joseph. And here now he, from the family of Jacob, and here now he is coming out from Egypt to Midian. Hmm, interesting. And he has to go back. We can wander around and then God activates his plan. We say, yes, I'll serve you. And there are not much things that we have to do. And then one day God said, now is your time. This is the moment that I call you for. And Moses saw the, fire, the, the, the bush burning, but not being consumed. And he said, let me go and see what's happening. God distracted him and called him and commissioned him. <laughs> and said, no, you got to go back to Egypt. And Moses said, well, who am I? I'm a wanted man. I'm a fugitive. I can't go down here. God said, I'm going to be with you. You will go. 
And for every excuse that poor Moses tried to put up, God had an answer. And so the task was set for him to go back because God had prepared the way. And he knew Egypt inside out as a Hebrew and as an honorary Egyptian because he had been adopted into Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's family, lived in the palace. And so he was the right man for the job. And God said, now you're going to come now. <laughs> well, Joseph went down there, captive. Moses was going down to release captives and bring them out. Why? You see how God works? See how God works? See how God works? Angus Busham says, Moses was an ordinary man, just like you and me. After 40 years in the wilderness, God called Moses to perform a great task. At first, Moses found the task daunting but God persisted with him and he went. Sometimes God has to persist with us for us to obey. But when, because we often sing that chorus, I'll say, yes, Lord, yes. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree and my answer will be yes. But when that time comes, God has to be insistent and persistent because our yes, is not yet God. Our yes is no God. Our yes is maybe God. Our yes is, let me think about it. Our yes is not the yes that we sang about. And therefore God has to be insistent and persistent. But God will go with us. And this is the assurance that we have. Just ordinary people. That's you and me. But when we are serving God and being used by Him, we get the opportunity. We are activated by God to do extraordinary things. Let's thank God for calling us, for choosing us, and commissioning us. Blessings.